<laughs> Deep within the rugged wilderness of the Pacific Northwest, a group of seasoned hunters gathered for their annual expedition. Among them was John Matthews, a weathered outdoorsman known for his unwavering determination and his desire to prove himself as the best in the group. As the hunters set up camp beneath a canopy of ancient pines, excitement filled the air. The forests here were dense and uncharted, teeming with elusive game. John was determined to return victorious, but little did he know that the woods held secrets darker than he could have imagined. Around the campfire, the hunters shared stories of the legends that had been passed down through generations. They spoke of mythical creatures said to haunt the wilderness, creatures with fur as dark as midnight and eyes that gleamed like burning embers. The locals called them the shadowed beasts, and tales of encounters with these elusive and malevolent creatures sent shivers down the spines of those who dared to venture deep into the heart of the woods. John dismissed the stories as mere superstitions, eager to prove his mettle. The first days of the hunt were marked by success as the hunters tracked and captured various game. John's confidence swelled, and he ventured deeper into the untamed forest in pursuit of the largest and most elusive prey. But when night fell on the third day, one of the hunters, Samuel, failed to return to camp. Panic spread among the group as they called out his name, their voices swallowed by the eerie silence of the wilderness. As the search for Samuel continued into the night, the hunters were plagued by unsettling sounds, whispers carried on the wind, echoing footsteps that seemed to vanish into thin air, and the haunting cry of an animal that defied description. John's determination wavered as unease settled in. He couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched by unseen eyes, and that the legends of the shadowed beasts might hold more truth than he had previously believed. Two days passed, and the search for Samuel grew desperate. It was during a moonless night that John had his first encounter with the elusive creatures. He had ventured alone into the dense thicket when he saw a pair of glowing, ember-like eyes staring at him from the shadows. Frozen with fear, he watched as the creature, its fur as black as the night itself, emerge. Its eyes held an intelligence that sent a chill down his spine. John's instinct to fire his rifle was overridden by an overwhelming sense of dread. John stumbled back to camp, his heart pounding with terror. He told the others of his encounter with the creature, but they dismissed it as exhaustion and paranoia. The remaining hunters intensified their search for Samuel, but the forest seemed to conspire against them, leading them in circles. Each night brought more haunting sounds and glimpses of the shadowed beasts. It became clear that the creatures were toying with them, hurting them deeper into the wilderness like unwitting prey. As days turned into weeks, the hunters' sanity began to unravel. They were plagued by nightmares of the shadowed beasts, their glowing eyes haunting their dreams. Fear and paranoia took hold, and they turned on each other, accusing one another of leading them into this nightmare. John's desire to prove himself had become an obsession, and it drove him to push deeper into the wilderness, desperate to confront the creatures that had become the source of their torment. John's relentless pursuit led him to a secluded valley deep within the forest. There, he encountered the shadowed beasts once more, their numbers greater than he could have imagined. Their eyes burned with an unnatural hunger. In a terrifying showdown, John faced the creatures, his rifle at the ready. But the forest seemed to close in around him, and the creatures moved with an otherworldly grace. He realized too late that he had become the hunted. In his darkest hour, John understood the true nature of the shadowed beasts, they were the embodiment of the forest's malevolence, protectors of its secrets, and avengers of those who sought to exploit it. As the creatures closed in, John's arrogance and desire for glory were stripped away, leaving only the realization of his folly. He surrendered, dropping his rifle and offering a silent apology to the wilderness he had trespassed upon. The forest seemed to accept John's humility. The shadowed beasts circled him, their eyes no longer burning with hostility. Instead, they radiated a profound, ancient wisdom. They vanished into the depths of the wilderness, leaving John with a haunting but peaceful silence. When the remaining hunters finally located him, 
He was change, his once obsessive desire for victory replaced with a deep reverence for the wild. They returned to camp, their numbers diminished, and the forest seemed to release its hold on them. The legend of the shadowed beasts persisted in the region, a warning to those who sought to conquer the untamed wilderness. John had learned the true price of arrogance and the importance of respecting the wild. The forest had claimed its tribute, leaving the hunters forever marked by their harrowing journey into the heart of darkness. The remaining hunters, including John, emerged from the wilderness change, their faces etched with a deep and unsettling understanding of the forest's secrets. They returned to civilization with a quiet resolve to never speak of their ordeal for they knew that no one would believe the horrors they had witnessed. John's obsession with proving himself had been replaced by a newfound humility and respect for nature. He no longer sought to conquer the wild, but rather to coexist with it, understanding that there were forces beyond human comprehension at play in the untamed wilderness. The legend of the shadowed beasts lived on in whispered tales among the locals, serving as a cautionary reminder of the consequences of arrogance and disrespect for nature. The forest continued to hold its secrets, and the hunters who had ventured into its depths remained forever changed by their experiences. As the years passed, the wilderness reclaimed the valley where John had faced the shadowed beasts. It became a place untouched by human presence, a sanctuary for the creatures of the forest, and a testament to the enduring power of nature. John never returned to the forest, but he often found himself drawn to its edge listening to the haunting sounds that echoed from its depths. He understood that the wilderness had a voice, one that spoke in whispers and echoes, and that it was a voice to be respected and revered. He became an advocate for conservation and the protection of wild spaces, sharing his story with others as a cautionary tale. He knew that the wilderness was not to be conquered, but rather to be cherished and protected for future generations. Despite the passage of time, there were questions that remained unanswered. What were the shadowed beasts, and why had they spared John's life? What ancient force had guided their actions, and what secrets did the forest still hold? These questions haunted John and the other hunters, a constant reminder of the mysteries that lurked in the wild. They knew that the forest would continue to guard its secrets and that some mysteries were not meant to be unraveled. In his later years, John often found himself reflecting on the events of that fateful hunting trip. He understood that the forest had tested him, humbled him, and ultimately granted him a chance at redemption. As he gazed into the wilderness, he felt a deep sense of gratitude for the lessons he had learned. The forest, with all its enigmatic creatures and ancient wisdom, had given him a second chance at understanding the true balance of nature and the consequences of human hubris. The legend of the shadowed beasts and the haunted hunting trip lived on as a chilling tale told around campfires. Those who heard it understood that the wilderness held secrets beyond human comprehension and that the wild was not a place to be conquered, but a realm to be respected. The forest, with its whispering winds and rustling leaves, continued to call out to those who dared to listen. It remained a place of mystery and wonder, a testament to the enduring power of the untamed wilderness. <laughs>
a silent stalker observing his every move. In the pre-dawn light, Jake set out on the trail of the elusive buck. The forest was cloaked in mist, and a sense of isolation weighed on him. Deep within the thicket, he spotted a pair of haunting eyes observing him from the shadows. The eyes seemed to glow with an otherworldly intensity, and an unsettling feeling crept over Jake. He raised his rifle, but the eyes vanished before he could take aim. Uneasy, he brushed it off as a trick of the light, determined to focus on the hunt. The forest became a labyrinth of twisted paths as Jake followed the buck's elusive trail. Unseen eyes seemed to track his every step, and the whispers in the wind grew louder, forming indistinct voices that spoke of ancient curses and forgotten tales. As he closed in on his prey, Jake sensed a shift in the atmosphere. The woods seemed to conspire against him, the once familiar paths leading him deeper into the heart of the wilderness. He realized he was no longer the hunter but the hunted. In his pursuit of the legendary buck, Jake stumbled upon an ancient clearing bathed in an eerie glow. Strange symbols adorned the trees, and an overwhelming sense of malevolence hung in the air. The whispers escalated into anguished cries, echoing the tormented souls of the forest. A dark realization dawned on Jake. The legendary buck was no ordinary prey. It was a guardian, protecting the sacred grounds from intruders. The forest itself was a living entity, and Jake had unwittingly trespassed into its ritual grounds. As Jake attempted to retreat, the forest came alive with ethereal figures that emerged from the shadows. Ghostly apparitions danced around the ritual grounds, their movements synchronized with the haunting cries that reverberated through the trees. In a trance-like state, Jake witnessed the spirits enacting an ancient ritual, their spectral forms intertwining with the very essence of the forest. He understood that he had become a pawn in a supernatural game, and the consequences of his intrusion were far graver than he could comprehend. As the ritual reached its climax, the ghostly figures turned their attention to Jake. Their eyes, mirrors of the haunting ones he had seen earlier, bore into his soul. The forest, enraged by his intrusion, sought retribution for the disturbance of its sacred grounds. In a nightmarish sequence, the apparitions closed in, their ethereal hands reaching for him. Jake, paralyzed with fear, felt a force beyond his comprehension pulling him into the otherworldly dance. The haunting cries crescendoed, blending with his own desperate pleas. In an instant, the forest swallowed Jake whole. The ritual grounds vanished, and he found himself in a nightmarish realm where shadows danced and whispers became agonized screams. The once familiar trees now twisted into grotesque shapes, and the very air seemed to pulse with malevolence. Haunted by the ghostly figures, Jake wandered through the abyss, his mind unraveling with each passing moment. The line between reality and nightmare blurred as he descended into the darkest recesses of the forest's supernatural domain. In the abyssal realm, Jake was tormented by visions and apparitions that defied the laws of nature. The ghostly figures circled him, their eyes gleaming with an otherworldly hunger. He could hear their whispers intertwining with the dissonant cries of the tortured souls that echoed through the darkness. As he stumbled through the surreal landscape, Jake felt a profound isolation. The malevolent force that lurked within the abyss seemed to feed on his fear, distorting reality, and plunging him into a nightmare from which there was no escape. Amidst the shifting shadows, a spectral guardian emerged, a towering entity with antlers that reached towards the twisted sky. Its eyes, a reflection of the haunting gaze Jake had encountered earlier, held a silent judgment. It was the ancient force that protected the forest's sanctity. The Guardian spoke without words, conveying a sense of cosmic authority. Jake understood that his trespass had disrupted the delicate balance of the supernatural forces within the woods. The Guardian's gaze bore into his soul, awaiting judgment. In an attempt to plead for mercy, Jake offered a desperate bargain to the Spectral Guardian. He pledged to leave the sacred grounds, never to return, and to carry the weight of the otherworldly knowledge he had gained back into the realm of the living. The Guardian's eyes flickered, as if considering the sincerity of Jake's plea. 
The forest around them seemed to hold its breath, awaiting the resolution of this otherworldly contract between the mortal and the supernatural. The Guardian, after what felt like an eternity, nodded in silent agreement. In an instant, the abyssal realm shifted, and Jake found himself standing once again in the clearing where the ritual had taken place. The forest, no longer twisted into nightmarish forms, seemed to have regained its natural state. Dazed and disoriented, Jake stumbled out of the woods. The spectral guardian's eyes lingered in his mind, a constant reminder of the otherworldly forces that dwelled within the heart of the wilderness. Back in the mortal realm, Jake struggled to make sense of the haunting echoes that lingered in his mind. The whispers, the ghostly figures, and the spectral guardian's gaze haunted his every waking moment. He became an unwilling vessel for the supernatural knowledge bestowed upon him. Haunted by the ordeal, Jake withdrew from the world, tormented by the memories of the abyssal realm. The forest, once a place of solace, had become a haunting reminder of the thin veil between the natural and the supernatural. As the seasons changed, the forest retained the echoes of the supernatural encounter. Locals spoke in hushed tones about the haunting whispers that lingered in the woods. The legend of Jake Thornton's otherworldly journey became woven into the fabric of the small town, a cautionary tale for those who dared to tread too deep into the wilderness. The hunting cabin, once a refuge for those seeking solace in nature, stood as a silent witness to the thin line between the tangible and the ethereal. The legend of the spectral guardian and the haunting echoes of the abyssal realm became an inseparable part of the forest's legacy. In the quiet moments of the night, the forest whispered its secrets to those who dared to listen. The haunting echoes of the abyssal realm carried on the wind, a spectral reminder of the supernatural forces that lurked within the heart of the wilderness. The legend of Jake Thornton and the spectral guardian became etched into the folklore of the small town. The forest, with its ancient rituals and unseen guardians, continued to be a realm where the natural and the supernatural coexisted, forever bound by the endless whispers that echoed through the shadows. Years passed, but the haunting echoes of Jake Thornton's supernatural encounter refused to fade. The small town that bordered the forest carried the weight of its eerie legacy. Locals avoided the depths of the woods, fearing the spectral guardian and the unseen forces that lurked within. The hunting cabin, once a hub of camaraderie and shared stories, now stood in solemn silence. Its walls seemed to absorb the unbroken silence of the forest, as if holding onto the secrets that had unfolded within its proximity. Intrigued by the town's eerie reputation, paranormal investigator Amelia Harper arrived, drawn by the tales of the haunted forest and the spectral guardian. Armed with an array of supernatural detecting equipment, Amelia sought to unravel the mysteries that clung to the woods. As she delved into the history of the small town, Amelia uncovered the legend of Jake Thornton and the Spectral Guardian. Determined to document the supernatural forces at play, she set her sights on the haunted cabin and the heart of the forest. As Amelia ventured deeper into the woods, the forest seemed to come alive with the resurfacing whispers that had haunted Jake Thornton. Unseen eyes observed her every move, and the atmosphere grew increasingly charged with an otherworldly energy. Amelia's equipment registered anomalous readings, capturing glimpses of spectral figures that flickered in and out of existence. Undeterred, she pressed on, driven by a relentless curiosity to uncover the truth that lay hidden within the shadows. Amelia reached the ancient clearing where the spectral guardian had judged Jake Thornton. The air grew thick with anticipation as the haunting eyes of the guardian appeared, fixating on the intruder who dared to trespass on sacred ground once again. The guardian's silent warning echoed through Amelia's mind, a telepathic communication that conveyed the ancient force's displeasure. But the investigator, fueled by determination, pressed on, her quest for answers overriding the instinctual fear that gripped her. As Amelia delved deeper into her investigation, she uncovered the origins of the spectral guardian and the supernatural forces that permeated the forest. The ancient rituals, the curses, and the thin veil between dimensions revealed a tapestry of the extraordinary. 
The haunting echoes that had plagued Jake Thornton were laid bare, each whisper unraveling a fragment of the forest's enigmatic history. Amelia realized that the spectral guardian was not a malevolent force, but a guardian of the delicate balance between the natural and the supernatural. In a moment of revelation, the spectral guardian communicated with Amelia, sharing the untold stories of the forest and its role as a nexus of supernatural energies. It spoke of the importance of preserving the delicate equilibrium and the consequences that befell those who sought to disturb it. Amelia, humbled by the guardian's wisdom, understood the significance of her findings. The forest, with its haunting echoes and spectral guardians, was a realm that defied conventional understanding, a place where the natural and the supernatural coexisted in a delicate dance. As Amelia concluded her investigation, she made a solemn pledge to respect the sanctity of the forest and its spectral guardian. The haunting echoes would remain, a testament to the mysterious forces that dwelled within the heart of the wilderness. The investigator left the small town, carrying with her the knowledge of the supernatural forces that lingered within the woods. The legend of Jake Thornton, the spectral guardian, and the haunting echoes would endure, etching the forest's enigmatic legacy into the fabric of the town's folklore. The forest, unchanged by the passage of time, continued to whisper its secrets to those who ventured into its depths. The haunting echoes of the abyssal realm and the spectral guardian's judgment persisted, an eternal reminder of the supernatural forces that defied explanation. The small town, burdened by the weight of its eerie legacy, learned to coexist with the mysteries that dwelled within the heart of the woods. The legend of the spectral guardian and the unbroken silence of the forest became an inseparable part of the town's identity, forever bound by the eternal whispers that echoed through the shadows. Despite the solemn vows made by those who encountered the forest's mysteries, an unsettling presence began to stir within the woods. The guardian, once a silent observer, sensed a disturbance in the delicate balance that had been upheld for centuries. The ancient rituals, disturbed by the footsteps of curious intruders, began to resonate with a dark energy. The whispers that once spoke of forgotten tales turned into ominous warnings, foretelling a looming darkness that threatened to awaken from its slumber. As the town settled into an uneasy peace, the nights grew longer, and a cursed moon cast an eerie glow over the forest. The spectral guardian, attuned to the celestial shifts, felt the encroaching darkness intensify. Unseen forces began to gather in the shadows, drawn to the town by an irresistible malevolence. The haunting echoes that had become a part of the folklore now carried a sense of urgency, as if the supernatural forces within the forest were preparing for a battle against an unseen adversary. The townspeople, unaware of the impending threat, found themselves haunted by nightmares that blurred the line between reality and the supernatural. Sleepless nights became the norm as whispers echoed through their minds, conveying a sense of impending doom. Amelia Harper, the paranormal investigator who had once delved into the secrets of the forest, received a cryptic message in her dreams. The Guardian, reaching out across dimensions, warned her of the awakening darkness and the need to confront the malevolent forces that sought to breach the veil. Amelia, compelled by a sense of responsibility, returned to the small town. The spectral guardian, once a stoic protector, revealed the existence of an ancient force that sought to exploit the supernatural energies within the forest for its own nefarious purposes. An unholy alliance between the malevolent force and the curses embedded in the ancient rituals threatened to tip the balance in favor of darkness. The guardian implored Amelia to unite with those who once dared to tread into the supernatural realm and stand against the impending threat. As night fell, a group of individuals, each touched by the haunting echoes of the forest, converged on the small town. Jake Thornton, forever marked by the spectral guardian's judgment, joined forces with others who had encountered the supernatural forces within the woods. The group, guided by Amelia and the spectral guardian's wisdom, prepared for the impending storm. The cursed moon hung low in the sky, casting an ominous pallor over the forest as the malevolent forces gathered, 
ready to breach the veil that separated the natural from the supernatural. In the heart of the woods, the final confrontation unfolded. The group faced an onslaught of malevolent entities that emerged from the shadows, drawn by the curses embedded in the ancient rituals. The haunting echoes intensified, creating a cacophony of spectral voices that reverberated through the trees. Amelia, armed with the knowledge gained from her previous encounter, led the group in a battle against the malevolent forces. The Guardian, its eyes ablaze with determination, stood alongside the defenders, ready to protect the forest's sanctity. The battle raged on, and the forest became a battleground between the defenders and the malevolent forces. The cursed moon reached its zenith, casting an unholy glow over the supernatural skirmish. Despite the overwhelming darkness, the defenders held their ground. The Guardian, its antlers aglow with an ethereal light, channeled the ancient energies embedded within the forest. The haunting echoes, once a source of fear, now resonated with a power that defied the malevolent forces. In a climactic moment, the Guardian unleashed a surge of supernatural energy that shattered the malevolent forces. The curses embedded in the ancient rituals were dispelled, and the forest's sanctity was restored. The cursed moon faded from the sky, and a serene calm settled over the woods. The haunting echoes transformed into a chorus of gratitude, as if the forest itself expressed appreciation for the defenders who had stood against the encroaching darkness. With the malevolent forces banished and the supernatural energies at rest, the small town and its forest reclaimed a semblance of tranquility. The spectral guardian, its eyes now filled with a sense of gratitude, returned to its stoic vigil, ensuring the delicate balance endured. The defenders, marked by their encounters with the supernatural, carried the legacy of the haunting echoes with them. The small town became a testament to the resilience of the natural and the supernatural, forever bound by the enduring power of those who dared to confront the mysteries that dwelled within the heart of the woods.